Oh yeah, Jamie, really good session today, mate. I know it's very difficult to try and play golf when we've got the uh, unmentionables, as we call them, ball fizzing off to the right there. It certainly creates a lot of tension on the golf course and stress and frustration. And I do sympathise with what you've been going through, mate. It's not a very nice thing to play golf with that. So hopefully with a bit of practice on some of the stuff we discussed today, we can start eliminating them at least to a point so they sort of come once or twice a month every now and then rather than sort of on a regular basis going around the golf course, hitting the ball 45 degrees off to the right. So just a couple of things to run through now in terms of where we were before. In terms of your setup, not necessarily here because you're in a much better position, but your arms were certainly getting a lot further away from the body. As we said, when people suffer with the unmentionables, that part of the golf club, they fear right in there. So what we see them doing is moving further away from the golf ball to just try and get further from the, the golf ball and the hosel. They put the golf club on the toe of the club to try to just get away from the hosel there. All these things that we say are going to cause you, when you get to the top of your backswing, for your arms now to work this way out towards the golf ball, cause the arm to get a long way away from your torso down to impact and just basically create the shank of the unmentionable that you were trying to avoid. So in terms of practice, you see the two T pegs here. Now these are just obviously your practice. So I just want to show you here that the movement going back was okay there and the arms start coming back down this way as we can see. But if we just look as we come into impact, just as you strike the ground about now, that's kind of your impact. If we look at the club face, your club's aiming somewhere over there. So just be careful, even when we're doing practice swings, we want to make sure that we're getting the club face back to the golf ball fairly square. If needs be, do it a little bit slower. But if you're in the golf ball there now, what you might find, because the way that club face is aiming so far off to the right there as you hit the golf ball, some of the shots that may in fact actually go off to the right aren't actually off the hovel. They're just the face wide open. So just be careful with that. But in terms of the feeling, as we said, you want the arms to be sort of just dropping down back under your chin there. Get yourself underneath your shoulders a lot more into the body and from there when we get back here we can swish that club through and get a bit more sort of swinging this way rather than swinging way out here and reaching for a golf ball put in the two t pegs down as we can see and this is going to be a really good practice start off with them roughly if we can put the club in oh, the camera's going to move put them in between there as you can see now the good thing about this is you've got the golf ball in the middle part of the club and there's just about a, I think we measured about a thumb width away, or thumb width gap, should I say, between the toe and the heel and the two tee pegs. And simply, even without a golf ball, just make practice swings at home, swinging between that gate. As you said, two weeks ago, you shot a really respectable 93. You probably didn't have a single shank in there at all, but you'd been playing right out the hosel. And that's the frustration with these shots, that they can sort of just creep up on you, and out of the blue, the ball shoots straight up to the right there. So if we look at this swing here now, a much better takeaway to the top of the batch. They're now nice and loose. The arms now falling down. This is more of a downward motion to underneath your chin. Rather, as you look at that position here now, the club's not quite as far in front, sorry, too far away from you. As you come back to the golf ball, we can see a reasonably good strike. This is a good shot, as we can see. However, even though we swing through the gate, you can see on there, we are pretty much on the edge. That's the hustle there. There's the toe. Your golf ball is hit, in this case, out of the air. I'm not saying it was a bad shot, obviously, because it was a nice shot. The ball went down the range nicely for your 50. But we've got to get yourself into a habit of really focusing on striking what feels the toe of the club initially. Work through these gates. If needs be, make the gate a bit smaller so you can really, really focus your practice on swinging that club through that gate more and more. If the tees don't move, will it a reasonable shot? It could be a bit healy, could be a bit toey could hopefully be at the middle of the golf club, but at least if the tees stay there, or the objects you're seeing in between stay there, you know you're striking the ball better there, Jamie, and then through to your follow through. So work on those as best you can. In some ways, like I said, it's like almost like a recalibration of where your club's coming back. It's just gonna take a bit of practice, but I think understanding how we produce the strike through the gate like so, more so from the down that the arms, where they're falling down from the top there, don't wanna to be too tense in that right shoulder, throwing the club outside the line, let the arms fall, we can switch that club through the gate with far more ease. So, hope that makes sense, buddy. Any questions, obviously, please feel free to give me a shout, and I'll catch up with you soon. Cheers, mate.